Hello there. Welcome back to Thriving Generation with Dr. G. It's another exciting day and a good day to thrive. I am excited as always to have a thriving mama with us. This is not just a mama, okay? This is a businesswoman. This is a mother, a wife, and many, many other things I do not want to talk about. But please, let's get excited to meet our guest for today. Lady Ellie, could you please introduce yourself to the Thriving Generation? Hello, Thriving Generation family. Dr. Grace, you're doing a great job. I'm excited to be here to add a little bit to what you're doing already. Um, as you have said already, I'm Ellie Esegbe. I'm a wife, a mother, a business owner, and other things, but I love Jesus as well. Yes. She does. <laughs> Thank you so much. Could you please talk about your educational background. Growing up, I think if I'm starting from elementary, I went to St. Jude. Um, I went to Accra Girls and I went to University of Ghana. Yes, yeah, so so far that's and now I'm still in the school of life, so that can be an addition. Oh, the school of life. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So you are here today because I would love for us to discuss something that I, I see you do. And I believe that if we can learn, we can all thrive in this area. And that is self-determination. There are not many people I know who can say that I finished my to-do list. I don't see that a lot. I always have something to do. There is always something that I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. So how did you learn this? Should I call it skill? How did you learn to be self-determined to get things done when you have to get them done? Yeah, it's interesting you are saying it this way. <laughs> but sometimes I look at myself and I'm wondering, did I actually get things done? But yeah, it's interesting. I think with this, some people, it comes naturally. I mean, they are born with it. and It's a blessing. Um, others learn it after a period of time with the experiences and the things that they have gone through. Personally, I, I, I don't know if I was born with it, but I, I can definitely see different instances in my life and experiences that have built these um, values in me. Um, so I won't say I was born with it. I'll just say that just the different experiences of life has made me, um, as you say, <laughs> self-discipline. Yes. So I can say that it's just based on the things that I've gone through and the things that I've experienced. Yes. Mm, and at what point did you realize that I'm learning something useful? Mm. That's interesting. I mean, I was thinking about I was thinking about it when you gave me the the theme, and I realized that as a person, I've been I've loved performing arts or arts arts in general. Mm. So um, since childhood, I've been in different choirs, I've been in dance groups, I've been in performing arts groups. So one thing I can see is, you know, we we do a lot of rehearsals, a lot of practicing to make sure that whatever you're going to produce is, is looking good, right? And it's, some, it's something that you're proud of. So looking back, I think that those things, till, till it is what you want it to be, you never give up. So thinking about it, I realized that those experiences have, have actually built that in me. Um, to say I sat in the class to learn it, I will not be telling the truth. I, I just think they are just normal experiences that everybody goes through and for me i remember countless rehearsals all night rehearsal you are you keep going till you get whatever we are we are looking for it to get and 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 sometimes those times felt like ah, this is stressful but looking back at it it has built so much character and trying to make sure that if it is not what you want you have to keep going you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you, you go through the day and you didn't get it. It's okay. Go, go to bed, wake up the next morning, go back to the task. The, I believe that the continual going back to it and trying to do it over and over again brings excellence or brings about excellence in you. So for me, I think when I think about it, that's what I can say. Yeah. Okay. That's lovely to hear. Can you walk us through like a typical day or week? A week may be reasonable. How do you get things done? How do you plan your week? Do you do weekly plan or daily plan? And then how do you actually accomplish the goals? Interesting. Um, now I don't do plans as much as I used to. 
um, I feel like after some time, it becomes part of you. So um, my typical day now, if you're a mother, it's different. If you are single, it's different. I mean, if you're single, I think, I think it's more structured than being a mother and a wife. You know, being a mother is like your kids have a lot of control about what <laughs> your life looks like. But mm -hmm. I think that for me, um, now I don't overly um, put too much pressure on myself because um, if I think I want to get it done, I'll stay up and do it, you know, and then I can sleep the rest of the time basically because I manage my own schedule. But if you work for somebody, you can't do that. You know, but in the beginning stages, I remember something a friend told me when I started my business. She said, Ellie, if you want to do well at this, and I was, I started in my house, I had a shop in my house and I was, she said, wake up every morning, take your bath, dress as if you are going to someone's office, you're going to work for somebody. And those things, you know, sometimes you think it's normal, it doesn't make any sense, but the mental, it, it, it does something in your mind, like, this is serious. This is not a joke. I'm taking it seriously. It is mine and I'm working at it. So for me, I can say that from the background of starting my own business and doing stuff for myself, you know, just having that mental picture of this is serious. This is not a joke. I want to end up the, the I want to end the day looking back and saying that I've achieved something. So I'm not just sitting home and then trying to do something and people have gone to work, they've achieved something and you come back and you have not achieved anything. So you should be able to mark yourself and be proud that you did something. And sometimes it doesn't matter how many things you do, but getting something done in itself is something that you can celebrate. So you ask yourself, was I able to accomplish something that I can be proud of? Then, then that's, that would be a win for you, you know? So it starts little, sometimes it doesn't go the way you plan and it's okay. It doesn't, I've had seasons in my life that, you know, I knew I was tired. I'm like, you know, I'm going to take the rest. But the difference is when I have to work or I have like a time frame for doing something, if it takes going through the night to do it, yeah. to get it done, I will, I will, because at the end of the day, it is fulfilling for me. And I can say that I have done something and I've not lazied about. So, I mean, that's my typical way of looking at it. But I think that as we grow up and we have children and we have husbands, you know, all the other things, you have to be a little flexible and adjust some of the things, you know, not, not being too hard on yourself, but you have to make sure that at the end of the week or at the end of the day, you can find one or two things that you can say it is done. Yes, your list, your to-do list might carry over to the next day, to the next week. It is still fine, but find one or two things that you can say, yes, I have accomplished this. I can take this and go to bed and not feel like I didn't do anything for the day. So that's how I look at it. Wow. I, I just love that. Dress up as if you are working for somebody. Mm -hmm. Get serious with your own business and get something done on your list. Yeah. So personally, I've heard people say that I want to do it, but I can't get myself to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tip or tools or recommendations on how to get ourselves motivated disciplined to mm -hmm. get up and get work done yeah i think um you know it still goes back to what i've learned um i grew up in a church where you know i i mean i think it has formed me icgc has formed most part of my life and i think for me one thing i can really remember is a service that i was in and then dr otabo preached a sermon and after that he said close your eyes, imagine where you want to be 10 years from now, what you want to do, how you want it to look like. So I'm going to vision. How you having a vision of what you want to do? And I remember that Sunday very well because I remember the picture that I had in mind, mm. you know? And every time I go through life, I, that, that picture comes back actually because I look at it, I'm like, this is where I want to get to. I am not there yet, so I keep moving. So I would advise everybody, if you want to do something, have a vision. Have a mental picture of what you are doing, where you want to go. You know, because you can't build anything if you don't see it. Yeah. You have to see it first to be able to build it. So I would the first thing I would say is have a mental picture. The second thing I would say is that have inspiration, have things that would motivate you to do it. Another example I can say is when I was in um, the youth choir, we had a choir called New Edition, and um, it has been so much of a blessing. I had some friends in the choir who were medical students and they, are, they were Nigerians. And these people used to amaze me so much. They used to come for all the all night rehearsals, but they come with their books. They come when we have a short break, they take a time and they still study. And they are passing their exam and they are still serving in church. And I'm like, wow, people can actually do this. 
And I'm like, then I don't have any reason to lazy about, right? Because everybody knows how medical school is. It's not like we are making a big deal, but it's a lot of work, especially colleagues, those who have been there. A lot of exam back and forth. And I could see the sacrifice. I could see how they were willing to do God's work, but they were still willing to work on their personal life. So it was like a balance. One part was not like lacking behind. So I look at that and I'm like, if these people are doing this early, you don't have an excuse. And I'm happy yeah. that I had those experiences because those things are inspirations. You know, as you go along the line, there are going to be bumps, there are going to be obstacles, there are going to be roadblocks. But then going yes. back to your vision and finding that inspiration, you know, friends and family have always been there. You know, people, sometimes it's just a little comment that somebody will make, oh, you're doing a good job. And that's what you hold on yeah. to for the phase that you're going through. Sometimes it's not going to be as you expect it to be, but have something at your back pocket or some, something, something that you can always go back and hold on to. And doesn't matter how small it is, you know, those things can just drive you through rough patches in your life. So yes, I can talk about vision. I can talk about inspiration and constantly going back to it. I mean, don't, don't close the door to it. If it's not looking like what you want it to look, nobody builds a house in a day. You know, think about it. The foundation is the most difficult part of it. So I think that, you know, usually when it comes to the foundation, it can be stressful, it can be tiring. And that's where people give up when they are doing stuff. But yeah, look at a house. When the foundation is good, the house stands well, you know. So think about it. Yes, you might be starting something new and you are putting in a lot of work and it's not feeling like what it is. But then it's taking shape. Sometimes just step back, ask somebody to help you look at what you are doing and how you are doing it. And I think that it's, it's enough to keep you going. Yeah, it's enough to keep you going. Lady Ali, let's talk about balance. Okay. I know you as a mother, you are doing well. You're a thriving mama. You're mm -hmm. a thriving business owner. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I should say businesses because more than mm -hmm. one. You're a okay. thriving wife. You're a thriving woman in God. I know that you mm -hmm. need the ministries and I've been in one of your ministrations, um, mm -hmm. really Women's World. Okay. So how do you do it all and still get the house in order? I've been to your house. It's a beautiful house. Well kept. How do you do it? How do we learn to balance everything? It's not even a balance. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I You are saying it this way. I don't see it this way. I feel like there are times that I don't mind. You know, there are times that people want to do get everything done. There are times that my house needs to be cleaned. You know, but I've learned one thing. Don't overly stress about some things. You know, you have kids. If you have kids, make mess. You know, so some people want everything to be on point. And if you want that, you get you end up getting stressed. So I've learned to take it one day at a time. You know, but with the help of family, definitely, my husband, friends, and family, it's very necessary. It's very necessary. And sometimes you are, you realize that like you are tired, but then just you knowing that you have the support from family, your husband is there supporting you. In fact, my family back home, my mom, my sister, you know, they are always there. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Then, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So it's not just about me being able to do it, but that kind of support system. I think everybody needs that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's an island. You, you cannot be by yourself. So you need that support system. People that are feeding you the right information to keep you moving. And so it is not all perfect. And I'm not for that kind of life. I mean, things can get better, but I feel like for my personality, I think that kind of life might be too stressful. So I just yeah. go with the flow as much as I can do. If I'm tired, I sleep. Even when I'm working, I feel like I'm more productive when I'm rested. Mm. So when I'm tired, I just take my rest, sleep as, I, as much as I can, rested, come back to it, and I, I get things done. So Get things done. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So there are some people who love structure. Mm -hmm. Have you used any particular structure or tool in the past that worked for you? So that if somebody's there and saying, I need to do something, what can I actually do? Have you tried anything like that in the past? Um, structure. I think about it as I look at my day. I look at the things that I need to uh, do I need to go back to things that I've done that I didn't really do is the way I wanted to things that will come up in the day so like you start your your day like that you start your day with writing out the things or else you would think that you would remember but you end up not remembering them so yeah. if you can't remember them I think that it's okay to write them down I have this I have this I have that okay some people will need to put um, 
some in the beginning like the 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 ones that are very important the ones that are not so important so that you're not beating yourself so there are some of them that you can't finish the day without doing maybe something like i needed to schedule a doctor's appointment and knew that today was the day to do that that's something that you can't just leave out of the list so put them as the top of the list some of the things there are things that can move to the next day they are flexible so you have the things written down all the things for the day i would advise that some people would do it and put time to it and i mean i think that's too stressful for me just put it as part of the day it doesn't matter when you get to do it but then just writing them down helps you to remember the things that you need to do and then just being flexible and knowing that if it wasn't done today i can move it to the next day and get it done wow wow thank you thank you so much i appreciate that well we are the thriving generation you've shared so much with us but we always would like to ask if you have a final word or final words for us sometimes we keep talking and we have something special that we forget to share and we don't want our guests walking away with all the special information so is there anything else you would like to share with us Okay, I thought I shared everything, but just this was coming to mind. Um, you know, sometimes people have tried so many things and it feels like they never get anything done or they are not fulfilled. I think there's always a new day. There's always a new mindset. You know, don't sit down and feel like I never get anything done. All these things they are saying because they, are, they have a certain background, they have a certain way of doing things. You can also do it. God gave everybody gifts and talents. God gave everybody the ability to do things. So I think that is the new day and thriving generation. All it's doing for you is that letting you see that it is possible. Mm -hmm. And the people who are saying it are not saying it because they had it on the silver platter. They are saying it because they tried. And I believe that if you try, you put in effort, you will get something accomplished that you'll be, you'll be excited about and you'll be proud of. So I just came to encourage anybody who is feeling like I've tried all I can do. I've done everything. I didn't have the right education. I didn't right, have the right family. Yes, those things are there, but those things should be stepping stones for you to actually achieve things. And think about it. If you're doing it, don't think about just you. Think about your children, think about your generation, think about your family. And I think sometimes just looking at it that way, that it is not just for you. Yeah. It's for it's for people out there. It is for someone to say that you did it so they can do it. Just think about that and go back and start again. Try it again. If you don't stop, it would succeed. Wow. So wow. If you don't stop, it will succeed. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Well, thank, you. thank you for having me. I enjoyed my time here and I, I pray that whatever we have shared will be helpful to anybody that is watching. And uh, again, Thriving Gen Generation, you guys are doing an awesome job. And, and I hope and I'm praying that all the people who are watching and are listening are taking the little tips here and there. And I believe your life will be so enriched and you will look back and say that it's a blessing that I was part of Thriving Generation. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much. We appreciate the encouragement as well. So you out there listening to us, what did you learn from this conversation? What are some of the tips you can use in your life to improve your daily activities? Please share with us. Do you have questions for Lady Ellie? You can also leave that in the comment section and we'll make sure we stop by to check them out. Thank you so much for staying with us to the very end. If you haven't subscribed by now, we will encourage you to do so so that you can learn more from awesome people like this. And please, as you have enjoyed the video, share with others and let them learn too. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.